bloody brawls are a daily occurrence. If they were big dogs, I'd probably be dead by now. Hostilities are at a boiling point. One of them gotta go. That ain't happening. It's up to Victoria to broker a peace. This has to change. I've made the behavior worse. I don't want to do that. Victoria is the last hope, because if it doesn't change, I don't know what I'm going to do, because I might lose my relationship, because I don't think my girlfriend's going to want to be with me with two screaming dogs, and I can't get rid of my dog. Usually, if I have them in a room together, I normally have to put the muzzles on them, because I just want to at least try to allow them to not be tied up, at least try to play. Sheena likes to bring the dogs together every day so they can have some together time. I wanted to see what together time was all about, with an emphasis on safety. See, that's the sizing up part of it, where they start staring each other down. See? That. Yeah. yeah, she's ready. OK, take it. <laughs> yeah, they know they got their muzzles on, so they, they want to go. Incredibly, Sheena and Tiffany also allow the dogs to have together time without their muzzles. We showed Victoria how we tied one of them to the coffee table and another one under the TV on a leash. Ellie! Ellie, no, no. No, no, Mama. No, no. I've seen enough of this. Yeah. Let's um, put one back in the bedroom. I am shocked at what is going on inside this house. Sheena and Tiffany's approach to these dogs is all wrong. Tying them up, having them in the same room together, it's just fueling the fire. It's making things a lot worse. What happens if things don't get better? Somebody's going to have to go and get adopted. One of them got to go. That ain't happening. That ain't happening. No. What, you're not, none of them are going to get adopted. You're not going to give one up. No. So what happens if that? I, I feel like them are my kids, them are my children. And you come into a situation where you have to make it work. You know, and people have, every day, parents have children that's bad. I don't see them giving their children that's, away. It's different. It's, it's they're not, not kids. To me, it's not different. So. They're not kids. If they were children, I would never put my child up for adoption. Well, but that's actually got to look at it with this. But a dog is definitely expendable. And if they don't go, then I guess I'll be looking for a room somewhere, or maybe I'm going to have to move back where I came from, and she could come visit me. Tiffany threatens me a lot that she's going to do this, she's going to do that. But I just feel like she just needs to get over it, because I'm not getting rid of the dogs at all. Now it's time for her to sit down and confront the girls with their issues. I see the love that you have for these dogs, but I also see the disharmony that a lot of your treatment is causing, and this has to change. Both of these dogs are living in a very, very stressful environment. These dogs despise each other to the point that they want to kill each other. <laughs> You've got two very feisty breeds here, a Dachshund and a Yorkshire Terrier, that were bred to kill things. And that's what worries me. You have fed your dog stress. You have made the behavior worse. You have managed it in a way that has caused it to get a lot worse. You have to understand, and I want you to be realistic, if this doesn't work, and if you can't manage the situation, you are going to have to open up your mind to the possibility of rehoming one of those dogs. Because their lives... No, I don't want to do that. I know. And I'm going to really work hard and try and not have that, OK? I promise you, I'm pulling all the stops out on this one. But I want you to know, I want you to prepare yourself. I mean, I know she'd be happy, but it's so hard for me to get rid of one. Like, I'm so attached to both of them. They're like my kids, and like, it's hard for me to do that. It's something that you have to face up to. But as I said, I'm going to work very hard to, to get your dogs to a place where hopefully that doesn't have to happen. Victoria wants to start rebuilding their relationship in a neutral environment. The reason why I brought her onto neutral territory is the house is associated with uh, a lot of negative things between the dogs. And I want to basically get the dogs working together side by side. Before Ellie can enter the picture, Victoria wants to start one-on-one -on -one with Nyla. I want to show you clicker training. The clicker is a precursor to a reward. I'm charging the clicker up. Throw the food. 
click. Each dog is going to have their own clicker, and the click sounds of each clicker are different. With Nyla responding to the clicker, Victoria has Sheena remove her to another room so Ellie can have a turn with Tiffany. Hi. I want you to try this clicking and treating. I'll hold the leash. All right. So I should click it. Good That's girl. It. So it's always click followed by treat. Good girl, Ellie. Nice. Good girl. Perfect timing. Now that each dog is responding to their respective clickers, Victoria wants to bring them together. My goal is to get the dogs closer together and not reacting. Fights are more likely to happen in confined spaces. So I wanted the training to begin in an open space so that the dogs wouldn't feel confined and wouldn't feel threatened. At the moment, Nyla is so stressed that she can't eat, so she can't focus on food. Good girl. Because she's too stressed to take food, I'm just telling her good girl for lying down. You can hear by the raspy panting that she's doing, good girl, that she's stressed. Up. Every time Nyla reacted to Ellie, we were out the door. And the same rules that apply to Nyla also apply to Ellie. Take her away as soon as she does that. If Ellie whines or barks, Ellie's taken away from the situation. Mm -mm. For girl. 10 more minutes, the dogs go head to head. It's really difficult to put a time on how long it will be until the dogs completely relax with each other. Ellie? No. Emotions take a while to change. Habits take a while to change and the dogs need to be given time. Ellie? Ellie is the first to remain calm. Now, I want you to take this over, okay? Okay. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Now, the stress level's coming down. She's taking food. Good Move girl. a bit closer. Obviously, we don't want the dogs to get nose to nose. Good. They come together, they go apart. They come together, they go apart. Good. Finally, after 15 minutes, there's a huge breakthrough. Good, Good. girl. You're working both your dogs in the presence of the other dog. Good girl. You're marking their calm, you're marking their non-reaction. Wow. That's something I haven't probably seen her lay down in her presence since the first fight. Look at her. Look at her, exactly. I felt my eyes welling up with tears when I saw that Nyla wasn't acting out. I mean, I felt emotional. She's a good girl. Wow. If you would have caught me about a couple of months ago, this would never been a case. They would have been okay. killing each other. It would have been no progress. OK, so if you take her out now, okay. and we'll follow a moment later. I feel very good at the progress that we've made, but I know that it's just a very, very small part of a massive, massive job. Now, the pressure is on, as the two dogs are about to meet on home ground for the first time since training has started. This is going to be tough. Mm -hmm. This is the challenge. The real challenge. Mm -hmm. OK, let's put Nyla back in first, get her safely situated, and then we'll bring Ellie. Normally, I don't like bringing the dogs in for a face-to-face -face greeting because it's very confrontational. But with these dogs, I had no choice. They're living in such close proximity they have to learn that they cannot react. Now I go, right? Now you can. With Nyla safely put away, Victoria wants to refresh the clicker training with Sheena and Tiffany. We're gonna do exactly the same thing as we did in the larger space? Yeah. Okay. Now, if she has a reaction, you go into the bedroom. Okay. Just hang there for two seconds, come back out again. I'm gonna be taking Nyla out that way. Okay. All right, are we all ready? Good girl. Mm -mm. Right from the word go, Nyla can't relax. Even when Ellie's in the other room, she was stressed out, she couldn't concentrate. Mm -mm. 
too riled up. As before, the clicker and treats are used to reward calm. But when they react, the dogs are removed. Yep, yep. It's really important to cut vision off between these two dogs. Because if it gets to the point where the dogs are reacting, they have to be removed from the sight of each other in order that they can calm down in order for the training to commence. She's not able to take food right at this minute. There's frustration being held. Good girl. Frustration being held back. Good girl, Nyla. What? Yay, good girl. Good girl. Each time she makes a decision to back away from Ellie, look at me, good girl, she gets a click and a treat. Nyla's showing really important progress. And it's going to take a long time for her to feel completely relaxed in Ellie's presence. But for the moment, we're making significant strides. You going to take over, Sheena? Good girl. Very nice timing, Chena. Good girl. Good girl, Nyla. The fact that they was in the same room without trying to kill each other or without barking at each other, growling at each other, this was a big step. Ellie's doing what could be construed as quite a tough stance. She's squaring up, but then she's choosing Good to back girl. away, which is great. Ellie. Instead of reacting, they make the choice to look back at their owners or to turn their body away from the other dog. Good girl, Ellie. Good, Tiffany. That is a huge step. Before, you saw it, they were just like trying to get each other, going crazy. <laughs> they were further away than they are now. Good girl. I feel hopeful at this moment. I feel like there's nothing that we can't do with the dogs. I mean, the opportunities are endless. Good girl, Ellie. 